Good afternoon and welcome to the South Orange County Economic Coalition's May Virtual General Membership Meeting. My name is Steve Lamont and I serve as the chair of the South Orange County Economic Coalition as well as the executive officer for the Building Industry Association of Southern California, Orange County Chapter. As a leading advocate for business throughout South Orange County, we thought we'd take a close look at two big projects that are very close to getting underway and will bring thousands of jobs, millions in tax revenue, and enhance South Orange County's reputation as a destination location. I'm talking about the Dana Point Harbor revitalization and the village at Laguna Hills, which would refurbish and renew the Laguna Hills Mall. We're gonna start with the Dana Point Harbor revitalization. It's a $330 million investment and a total revamp of the harbor. Phase one is expected to begin shortly with construction in the marina. And with the docks decaying almost before our eyes, the timing couldn't be better. The Dana Point Harbor revitalization has been in the works for literally decades, but Supervisor Lisa Bartlett was able to make it a reality. Before we get to the developer, Brian Ward of Burnham Ward, to discuss the specifics, why don't we let Supervisor Lisa Bartlett give us a little history on how we got here. Supervisor. Thank you, Steve. As Steve said, the Dana Point Harbor revitalization project has been the subject of much discussion and planning for over 20 years. The revitalization of the harbor has always been a top priority for me, both as a member of the Dana Point City Council and as a supervisor for the 5th District. Building upon the hard work of many stakeholders, I focus my efforts on bringing this project to reality in the best way possible. Looking to deliver a first-class development, I wanted to leverage the expertise of the private sector by entering into a public-private partnership, also known as a P3. There are many advantages to a public-private partnership, such as the ability to revitalize and build new state-of-the-art facilities with best-in-class partners without incurring any public debt, thereby saving taxpayers millions of dollars. In addition, entering into a P3 partnership for the project significantly reduced the time frame for its completion and enabled the county to enter into a long-term ground lease with the P3 partners. Proposals were sought from industry experts on how best to revitalize this prime piece of South County real estate. After an extensive process, Dana Point Harbor Partners was selected as our team of choice on this project. And in 2018, under my leadership, the county signed a 66-year master lease agreement with Dana Point Harbor Partners. This action finally gave developers the green light to move forward with the project. Dana Point Harbor Partners wasted no time in getting to work. The $330 million plus project will revitalize and build out both the land and waterside amenities in the harbor. This project features new docks, a new commercial core, two hotels, dry boat storage, improved parking, and connectivity between all major components of the project, and much more. Earlier this year, Dana Point Harbor Partners cleared a major hurdle when they received unanimous approval from the California Coastal Commission to move forward with the marina development. The partners embraced many special conditions critical to the Coastal Commission during the approval process, including protection of marine life, enhanced water quality, expanded public access, educational sailing and water sport programs, Construction is scheduled to begin on the redevelopment of the marina at the end of this year and will include enhanced public access to the water, creation of new public areas to expand recreational opportunities, and a new parking structure. Despite challenges of COVID-19, Dana Point Harbor Partners continue to push forward with the construction of a world-class development that will be enjoyed by South County residents and tourists from around the world. Thank you, Supervisor Bartlett. Okay, Brian, thanks for being here today. So first of all, it's gotta feel like you're at the finish line because you finally have received all your regulatory permits needed while at the same time, you're at the starting line because now the work of construction and development begins. Absolutely, and, and let me say, uh, first of all, how delighted I am to be here. And, uh, and secondly, how excited we are as a team to get to this point. Good. Uh, it's been a long time coming. There's a lot of heavy lifting that have been done to get us to this point, not just by our team, but, but a lot of very important people that paved the way for us sure. to get here. So we're excited to start. Well, outstanding. So we hear a lot of horror stories uh, in California about the regulatory process, something that you're, you're probably an expert at this point. Uh, Elon Musk left California for Texas. 
Orange County has seen the automotive industry and the aerospace industry leave, yet you and your partners were able to see this project through. So tell me about the process. What were some of the biggest challenges and how did you overcome them? It's a great question. And, and look, there's always challenges, mm -hmm. but I, I think that uh, it's really a testament of uh, first and foremost uh, to our partnership and the way that we are structured, which actually is one of the reasons why the county chose us. Mm -hmm. We're all local. Uh, we're all kind of best in class at what we do. Sure. Uh, and we're all invested literally in everything that we're doing here in the harbor together. Mm -hmm. So uh, Burnham Ward Properties uh, specializes in experiential retail. We know it very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're used to all of the regulatory issues centered around it. Sure. Uh, obviously, um, uh, Bellwether Financial uh, mm -hmm. is is very well versed in in, in docks mm -hmm. and slips and marinas and everything that 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 occurs around that, and R D Olson is incredibly well uh, versed in hotel development. In sure. fact, does most of it along the California coast. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of experience with regulatory agencies around uh, hospitality. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that um, a, as a group, um, you know, we approach all of our developments the same way. Um, we understand what's coming down the pipe and we take a very proactive approach. Um, I'll also say that this is a P3 partnership. Mm -hmm. And so in a P3 partnership, we're obviously um, first and foremost partnered with the county, but we sure. also have a very, very close relationship and association with the city of Dana Point mm -hmm. and even the state of California. So we've been able to collaborate with them all along the way and, and really anticipate the kinds of things that are important to the regulatory agencies. So we're in a position, a unique position, to not only um, understand what's coming down the pipe, mm -hmm. but to anticipate those things and even be proactive and offer up new ideas. And I think they appreciate that. Well, good to hear. Uh, so let's talk about a little about the specifics. So what are the highlights? Uh, what is the revitalization of the harbor uh, going to look like once it's completed in five years? Well, uh, it, it'll be a, a, certainly an updated, vibrant version of, of what it is today. Sure. Uh, you know, our, we're tasked with really um, preserving the, ch the charm and the integrity uh, and the personality of Dana Point, mm -hmm. at the same time uh, elevating what is a 50-year-old project. Yeah. And so what you're going to see is you're going to see um, uh, fabulous shopping, dining, great architecture, great design, uh, lots of public spaces, and certainly in the retail commercial core, lots of great outdoor programmable spaces. Mm -hmm. So a real commitment to bringing lots of events, everything from Good. food and wine festivals to concerts, outdoor concerts, to, uh, you know, to some really exciting markets and, and types of things that the public loves to enjoy on the water. Um, but I think one of the things that we're most excited about, um, again, by virtue of the way that we've structured our partnership, is this ability to tie the entire harbor together. So what you're going to see is you're going to see a really a seamless transition, how you go from waterside to landside to hospitality, and really how you, how you travel from Doheny Beach all the way to the Ocean Institute sure. and everywhere around the harbor. A real commitment, not, not just to the areas that we're individually doing, but the entire user experience. All right, so Brian, you kind of talked about the different factions of the harbor. So with all of these factions, can you talk a little bit about how you're able to thread the needle, for example, with the Dana Point Harbor Merchants Association, the Dana Point Boaters Association, the existing leaseholders, the future tenants, of course, and how did you manage this sometimes conflicting public input direction that you guys received? That's a great question. Uh, again, I think it really goes back to our commitment to communication and collaboration mm -hmm. since early on. Uh, we had a number of public workshops, uh, community workshops, where we solicited input from the public, mm -hmm. and we got a lot of great input. Uh, that really confirmed Good. that we were on the right track from a design perspective, and it also gave us a chance to get some new ideas as well from the public, mm -hmm. many of which we've been able to weave and incorporate into the new design, mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, it, it's a community that's very protective um, of the rich history of Dana Point, sure. uh, of the Dana Point DNA, um, that sort of laid back vibe. And so um, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, they understand that with change uh, certainly comes uh, a little bit of pain, but a lot of great opportunity. And I think that they feel um, as though the county does that our team has sort of um, really met that challenge mm -hmm. of striking the balance between honoring that rich history, uh, preserving the charm of Dana Point, and also um, setting the project up 
uh, to where it's going to be very sustainable, uh, you know, for, for generations to come. Sure. Well, as someone who grew up around here, I definitely appreciate that because this is the harbor I remember from my childhood. So I think character is important. So I really appreciate that. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the phasing of the project. What can we expect first? And how did you determine the phasing aspects of the re revitalization project? Well, the phasing really is something that uh, is, is by design. Um, we entered this with the understanding that we were going to prioritize certain things uh, in our construction approach. And, and one of those, or you know, among those, are, um, are really a, a, a commitment to keeping the harbor open during construction, sure. maintaining public sure. accessibility to the water, allowing our businesses to continue to operate, um, you know, uh, r really striking a balance between how we move people around yet continue mm -hmm. the, the construction uninterrupted. And, uh, and so the phasing is going to start with a commitment towards really preserving parking, sure. uh, which is one of the things that um, oftentimes gets displaced when you construct. Sure. Uh, and so we'll start with the parking structure, and then we'll move uh, to all the waterfront buildings in our new development, and then we will hit the wharf area and redevelop it, and then finish with a surface parking lot up on Dana Point Harbor Drive. Perfect. So all told, we're looking at a very uh, surgical approach and about a three-year build-out for okay. the commercial core. Okay, good to know. So a little bit about the economics, as you said, trying to keep the businesses open, which is a huge part uh, of this process. But I would imagine this is going to be a great regional job creator, both short-term for construction as well as long-term jobs and a significant tax generation uh, as well. So uh, what are your estimations on this front? Yeah, it, 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 we're most excited uh, because obviously we're infusing, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of money in the development. So from a job creation standpoint associated with, with construction, that goes without saying. Um, but, but most excited about the, um, the, the total revenue lift that we're going to be getting through the revitalization. Uh, bringing in, you know, m more tenants, uh, more restaurants, um, really enhancing the user experience and elevating the opportunity for people to come to Dana Point Harbor and spend tax dollars. Um, right now, there's a lot of people in South Orange County that are moving out of the county with those tax dollars, and we want to try to keep them here. And quite frankly, the city wants to keep them here and the county wants to keep them here as well. So uh, we've, uh, we're excited about really you know, elevating that revenue opportunity for the, uh, for the local municipality. Outstanding. So we had a question from the public. Uh, this comes from James Lenthal, who understands the need for revitalization, but also wants to preserve the character of the harbor. You kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, uh, but we're going to go to James here. Good afternoon. My name is James Lenthal. I am a past president of Dana Point Voters Association, past chair of Dana Point Harbor Advisory Board, current board member of Dana Point Yacht Club and a lifelong voter. My question starts with this. There is broad agreement in our community that revitalization is long overdue. The infrastructure is quite literally falling apart. In some places, even the docks are literally falling into the water. But there's also some concern among long-term harbor loyalists that revitalization may also mean a transformation away from the charm and character that defines our harbor and for which it's so beloved. So what can you say to our community to put their concerns at ease that revitalization will not replace but enhance the character of this community? Thank you. Okay, so Brian, what is being done to modernize the harbor again while keeping that character? An important question. It's a very important question and, and it's, it's obviously heavy on a lot of minds. It always has been, actually, uh, ever since we started this pro process. Um, it, it, we're, we're going to, first of all, I think that, that the way that we're approaching the architecture and design, uh, there's an emphasis on maintaining charm. Yeah, sure. um, you know, the scalability of the project. We actually have reduced the project in scale mm -hmm. to what was originally contemplated because of that. We also introduced four-sided architecture, uh, whereas uh, the, some of the prior concepts um, you know, had the property um, enhanced on one side, but, but the back sides were sort of forgotten. Okay. And so we situated our buildings on, in our plan in a way that it behaved more village-like, which is not unlike the way the harbor behaves today, mm -hmm. where you can walk around the buildings, you can walk through paseos, uh, you can enjoy the water from a lot of different mm -hmm. perspectives. And so um, I think scalability and walkability is, is, um, it speaks to that charm. So obviously materials, architecture, sure. design, emphasis on 
lots of outdoor public spaces. Um, so the property almost will feel like you're walking through a park that has buildings in it. Sure. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. The other thing that we're doing, which again, I speak, speaks to the history and the charm and the, the homage that we're, we're paying to, to, um, to that history and charm, is we're introducing a lot of educational uh, elements, a lot of uh, public art, ways to celebrate a lot of the, the people that have been influential, sure. what Dana Point has become known for today, which is really a waterman's paradise. And so you will see um, woven in the project lots of great things that are constant reminders that'll keep the historical significance mm -hmm. intact. Perfect. Well, my last question here is actually going to be about what you think personally. And so what about this project excites you the most, uh, both in the short term and the long term? That's a great question. And there's so many things I don't know that we have enough time to cover. Sure. I mean, and I'll speak on behalf of our partners yeah. as well, because we're all incredibly excited about this. First of all, uh, we all grew up going to Dana Point Harbor. Mm -hmm. So we're all invested in, in, in really in not just uh, what we want to accomplish, but in what we did not want to see accomplished with the harbor. Sure. Um, we didn't want it to fall in the hands of uh, the wrong development company that might have been motivated by things that weren't going to be in the long-term best interest of the harbor. And so we approached it as a legacy project um, and, and really a gift to, to, uh, to the community uh, in terms of how we would steward the, uh, the project going forward. So I'm excited about the ways that we're going to tie everything together from the water side and the land side. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think there's really been an opportunity to do that in the past, not just in Dana Point, but in a lot of areas along yeah. the coastline. Um, people have this natural tendency to separate the water side and the land side, perhaps because they require different levels of expertise, mm -hmm. but really um, it ought to be seamless in our opinion. And so when you're, whether you're on the harbor on a stand-up paddleboard or on your boat or you're on land dining or shopping or just walking the harbor, you know where you are and you know you're in Dana Point. And so we see that as just a great challenge uh, to execute on, uh, that vision and that connectability and that walkability and, and that entire experience that when you come here, you'll not forget that experience. All right, thank you for your time, Brian. Uh, we appreciate your tenacity and we look forward to the success because this project will be one of the largest economic engines for the South Orange County region. Stay with us. When we get back, we'll talk about another project that will be an economic driver for the region, the revitalization of the Laguna Hills Mall. We'll have more on the economic engines of South Orange County right after this. Did you know almost two out of three American jobs are created by small business? And nine out of 10 companies have fewer than 20 employees. Our local dry cleaners, hair salons, florists, coffee shops, and restaurants, they need your support now more than ever. As the leading business advocate in the region, the South Orange County Economic Coalition encourages you to shop local to protect our hometown businesses. For our jobs, for our neighbors, for our community. Shop local. The South Orange County Economic Coalition is the leading business organization throughout the region. We've been the voice of businesses in South Orange County for more than 50 years, and we work diligently to promote a strong economic climate and provide updates on important issues discussed at the state, regional, and local levels. Our members include key community stakeholders, businesses large and small, as well as public agencies, all committed to building a strong business climate both regionally and within our local communities. We advocate for our businesses and members by taking positions on legislation and local initiatives that have a direct impact on our communities. We hold monthly membership meetings, meet and greet events with our federal, state, and local legislators, and provide an annual economic report for South Orange County. Educate, facilitate, advocate. We're the South Orange County Economic Coalition. Learn more at economiccoalition.com. All right, welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, well, the Dana Point Harbor isn't the only major revitalization project in South Orange County. If we go further inland, we'll find the Laguna Hills Mall located at El Toro Road and the I-5 Freeway. Nestled between Saddleback Memorial Medical Center and the Laguna Hills City Hall, the Laguna Hills Mall was a destination 
throughout the 80s, 90s, and into the early 2000s. Unfortunately, with the advent of Amazon and online shopping, the idea of window shopping at the mall or hanging out at the video arcade became a relic of yesteryear. COVID simply accelerated the impacts of in-person retail shopping, and malls throughout the country, from Century City in Los Angeles to Main Place in Santa Ana, have submitted proposals to turn their retail space into mixed-use space that will revitalize the mall, create a destination location, and add desperately needed housing to the mix. Former Laguna Hills Mayor Joel Lautenschlager is a longtime supporter of the revitalization of this property and recorded this introduction that provides a little history of how far this project has come now that it is on the precipice of approval. Joel? Good afternoon. I am Joel Lautenschlager, a former mayor and city council member in the city of Laguna Hills. We're standing on a property here that is soon to be developed by the Merlone Gear uh, properties that will hopefully develop this into what we envision to be something that is, the city has looked at for over 20 years, and that is part of our urban village specific plan. 20 years ago, we, put a, we had a vision that would combine civic, commercial, retail, recreation, education, into a, making this area one of the core key parts of the city of Laguna Hills. Merlot & Gare purchased this property back in 2013 from the Simon Group and started developing plans for a development here on these 70 acres, which is the principal part of the urban village. Uh, they subsequently saw that retail development was not, that they had originally envisioned was not going to be happening. And during that time, they also acquired the leases for both J.C. Penney's and uh, Macy's department store. So now they took a look at a broader development for this entire area. Uh, in 2016, the city approved uh, a plan that they had developed, but they quickly the developer quickly realized uh, retail sales weren't going to be happening in this area. Malls were dying across the country. Retail sales were going to more online shopping. It was really a, a whole sea change in how people were changing their buying habits. So they quickly revised it and what they are bringing forth at this time and actually presented to the city in 2019 was a new area that's now called the Village at Laguna Hills. The village here encompasses less retail, more residential, but still had the vision of the specific plan of the city to combine the civic, the recreational, the educational, the commercial, the retail, those parts that they wanted, we wanted to both in our general plan and in this urban village that would be a core central part of the city. The present thing that they would like to bring to the city at this point has tremendous advantages for the city. Number one, it's over $3 million a year in annual revenue to be used by the city in any way possible. Over $28 million in fees and different types of required development that they are supposed to provide for the city. This can be used for our parks, our recreation areas, almost anything the city would like to use it for. Those, those monetary advantages are also coupled by the fact that the city is required to provide housing. This plan provides for more than 60% of the housing that is required by the city of Laguna Hills as mandated by the state of California. So it does goes a great way in answering those housing issues that are prevalent in this whole area. If you look around this area, you just basically see a wasteland, and that's what the residents are telling me. They want to see something developed here. They are sick and tired of looking at just this empty asphalt place. They want to see this project move forward, and that's where we should be heading at this time. All right, thank you, Joel. As the former mayor noted, the owner of the Laguna Hills Mall, Merlone Geyer, is proposing a unique mixed-use concept that is market-driven and feasible. This project will include not only retail and residential, but also office space, a boutique hotel, and even a 2.5-acre public park where the city can hold summer concerts and other community events. The project will provide tens of millions of dollars in tax revenue to the city that will go to the city parks and it'll provide a regular revenue stream of millions of dollars annually to support city services such as police, fire, 
parks, streets, and other infrastructure needed. Joining us now is Merlone Geyer's VP of Development, Stephen Logan. All right, Stephen, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what I'm gonna do is I got a list of questions here and we're gonna start at the 30,000 foot level. So tell me about the changing face of retail and how malls have changed over the past few decades. So what's happening over what we've seen over the last couple of decades is that BNC malls have tended have trended down and the sales mm -hmm. with those malls have, have trended down. And in order to revitalize the retail, yeah. you have to make it more substantive with, with other types of uses such as office, multifamily, sure. apartments, such as that, in order to bring the right type of relevant retail. You know, retail's not dead. Yeah. It's just the relevant type of retail that comes to these centers wants the support of other types of services, such as a hotel, such as sure. residential, and such as office, because that's where that's the trend of, of, of how we're going. And, yeah. and with Laguna Hills Mall, we feel that we're ahead of that trend and being able to bring something to South Orange County that's not in South Orange County and have an economic engine, you know, moving that forward, knowing that the decrease in the in the sales of the mall have have happened over the last sure. you know, 10 years. Cre creating the space, if you will. Creating right. the space. And putting the people the, there. Correct. Yeah, correct. Good. Well, let's talk specifically about what most of our viewers know about the Laguna Hills Mall. Me personally, it's where I grew up. It's the mall I went to as a kid. Uh, but what is the village at Laguna Hills going to look like? What are some of the amenities that we're going to be able to look forward to? So one of the things that we heard from the community, one is we want to keep the pumpkin patch, we want to keep the Christmas yeah, sure. lot. We want to have an area. And so we've created that type of space. We've also created, you know, as you mentioned, a two and a half acre park mm -hmm. that has amenities, has outdoor concert space. We also have a huge big screen within the, within the parks. So we can have awesome. community events for, you know, the Super Bowl or the World Cup and mm -hmm. people can come and bring chairs. We're going to have food and you know, we can have food trucks. We can shut the we can shut some of the the streets down in order to you make make it lively. We can mm -hmm. bring in you know the five k to the start. We've been talking to Saddleback yeah. about bringing health fairs and and how to make sure that we can make it you know healthy for the community moving forward. And with the type of retail, you know, the two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. feet of retail that we're going to bring, it's going to be relevant. It's going to be boutique. It's yeah. going to be regional and local. But with with all the amenities, with the with the housing which mm -hmm. is needed in the city of Laguna sure. Hills. Yeah. And the office amenity, um, we, we believe that this is just the amenities of all of the hotel and the office and the residential is going to make Laguna Hills thrive again and, and bring back that type of, of life that, that yeah. once was at the mall. Good to hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. And so, so in addition to helping the city comply with its regional housing needs assessment numbers or RENA as we refer to them, providing the city with a 2.5 acre public park at no cost to the city and the taxpayers providing new retail space, office space, a hotel that will bring additional revenue to the city through hotel tax and a new cinema. What are the other, or what are some of the other strict financial benefits through tax revenue and park fees this project will provide to the city residents? So it's part of our development agreement with the city. We've, we've agreed to pay the city roughly in the first uh, 90 days, mm -hmm. about three and a half million dollars. Two million of that will go to park fees and about 1.1 million of that will go back into the general fund in order okay. to, in order to uh, help them with their traffic infrastructure that they put in a few years mm -hmm. ago. Um, about an, a year later, we will we'll provide the city with another million dollars back into their general fund. Okay. And so that's about four and a half million dollars within the first 15 months of the development agreement. Mm. And within two years after that, we will provide more, more park fees to to the city. Regarding your, your question rega with taxes and, and infrastructure with the hotel and the and community benefits, we believe that with the hotel and the retail, it'll be about a $1.3 million benefit to the city on a yearly basis when it's okay. fully built out. And then we're guaranteeing within the first seven years of the development agreement, $15 million to the city, which most of that money will go into their community for their parks, mm -hmm. for the upgrade of their parks in which they're desperately needed. And today they do not have any funding for, for, those, for those aspects. Yeah, so okay. we've, we've also gone through on the arena numbers to your point mm -hmm. and, and we're providing 1500 units, which is about 45% of the arena numbers moving forward. We've also are providing 200 affordable units, sure. which the zoning is, does not require those sure, affordable units, sure. but as part of our agreement with the city, we've agreed to put in 200 affordable units to help out with the arena numbers moving forward. So. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we need attainable housing, we need affordable housing, and what it sounds like is you're putting in affordable units proactively when the city is not requiring it. That is correct. Outstanding, okay, that very good. So we have a question from the audience uh, from Les Card, uh, and so I'm gonna kick it over to Les. 
Hi, uh, this is Les Card with LSA. Um, I'm curious, you know, what was or has been the most challenging aspect of the approval process? All right, Les, thank you for that question. And so obviously process is a big uh, challenge for you guys and, and a concern of most. So uh, what's your response? So the biggest challenge obviously doing development in California is the process that you have to go through. You know, the, the addendum to the, to the environmental review has been challenging. It just takes time and, mm -hmm. and in order to understand traffic and other types of greenhouse gases and sure. environmental issues. That, that's probably the biggest challenge, you know, moving forward, that everything doesn't happen quickly. And mm -hmm. I think people want to see stuff happen quickly. You know, we've obviously been through a couple of these entitlements and trying to understand the marketplace. And so also the biggest part of the process is trying to make sure what fits right within the community, sure. within within the county, and, and what is going to drive the economic engine back to the city in order to help financially make them better yeah. and so that's one of the biggest process issues that i think we had and we spent a lot of time trying to understand the right type of retail mm -hmm. the right type of office the city absolutely wanted a hotel and we think it's a great amenity to the to the site and to the office as well and helping the city out with arena numbers and, and making sure that they're meeting the reasonable housing needs is is a big is a big deal to yeah. us but just trying to find the right type of site plan and going through the the environmental analysis is has been a challenge you know staff has been very supportive of, mm -hmm. w with us and they've been great to work with and and so it just takes time and i think time is probably the biggest part of the process sure okay well you kind of touched upon my next question but what kind of response from the community have you received i know i'm a community member i'm excited about the project but is that what you're hearing across the board so we are we had we've held three community forums mm -hmm at the end of last year. We've also had a couple of other community um, outreach at the farmer's market and, mm -hmm. and, and at the mall. And today we have over about 250 support letters awesome. within the community. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, one of the things that we hear from the community is we really want to see something happen. We want, we want a place to go. We want, you know, better restaurants. We want better retail. We want more boutique retail. We want a place to go hang out with our mm -hmm. friends and walk around and, and, but we've heard nothing but positive feedback Good. from the community. You know, granted, we're not going to be able to make 100% of the people 100% happy, yeah. but having 90% support within the community that showed up to our city council hearing as well has been has been a great, you know, notion to us that the community really wants to see something happen here, and and, and we're very excited to finally get something started here and, and, and move this project forward. Good. Sounds like you're on the right track. We're, we're moving and, forward, and yes. Perfect. Perfect. So, so let's get a little bit into specifics of what's going to be there. Uh, let's see. What about some of the famous restaurants? Uh, and shops that are there today. And I am thinking uh, specifically about King's Fish House, uh, in and out of course, uh, everyone's favorite, uh, and Nordstrom Rack. So with that King's Fish House, we signed a, we signed a long-term lease with them back before the pandemic happened. They've okay. obviously gone through a remodel. They're a great tenant and we believe, you know, their sales have trended up even during the pandemic. Okay. And so they're gonna be there long-term. Same with in and out they got a long-term lease with us. Nordstrom Rack, we're gonna look at relocating them into some of the new retail within mm. the project. And we think Nordstrom Rack wants to be here for a long period of time. Sure. They like the visibility of the freeway. It's been a great, they've been a great to the community. They do very, very well here. And they're gonna bring other types of retail tenants here that are gonna be local, regional, and maybe some national restaurants so yeah. people can hang out. But you know, the trend of retail these days is, is places for people to hang out, sure. smaller boutique type of, type of areas. Even when you go to fitness, more, most people wanna have like an Orange Theory or, or a Soul Cycle, which mm -hmm. is a, just a smaller type of fitness at, yeah, at atmosphere. Exactly. We could potentially look at an Equinox or something like that here, but we're, we're also looking at movie theater. We're looking at you know how the, how the movie theater industry is changing, and, mm -hmm. and it is changing. But people do want to go back to the movies and want to be sure. able to want to be able to get back to you know life at, yeah. as it was. And we're very excited about about what this is going to bring on a long term basis for for the community and for and the city of Laguna Hills, as well as residents of South Orange County. Well, I for one can say, uh, I don't mind watching new movies at my house as we have over COVID, but I am dying to get back into the theater. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that. We hear, uh, we hear that a lot from I'm a lot sure, of residents I'm sure. and from a lot of com community members. So yeah, yes. I'm sure. So, so how has it been, or I guess, what have you heard from uh, the city of Laguna Hills, I guess, working with the city uh, about this proposed revitalization project? So we've been working with city staff and we've been looking at how best to revitalize the site and, and it's taken us some time. Obviously, mm -hmm. we slowed down a little bit because of COVID and, and as a company, we refocused our, our mind a little bit. But sure. city staff has been tremendous. They've 
they've worked with us, they've tried to keep everything within, you know, the the zoning and the general plan that's that that was determined back mm -hmm. in 2003 in the in the specific plan. And we've tried to really stay within, I don't want to call it a box, but within mm -hmm. those parameters. Sure. And so, you know, we're, we're we're not asking for anything from the city. We're not asking for any any financial wherewithal. We're we're not asking for any general plan or zoning amendment. Okay. We're we're willing as part of the development agreement to to commit to $15 million in the first seven years. And that actually goes up to around $24 million through the life of the development agreement wow. as, as time goes through. Yeah. But city staff has been supportive. And, and if you go back and look at the city council hearing as part of their staff report, we thought it was very comprehensive and, and, mm -hmm. and very, very well prepared. Well, so I guess what I, I'm going to ask next is going to be what are, what are the next steps? And and I was at the first city council meeting, so I know that the next steps are going to be continue the public hearing, mm -hmm. uh, which will ultimately happen. Um, but what I, I also want to make a comment is, too, is that what you mentioned is this is within a specific plan, meaning the city asked for it. Is that accurate? This is what the city wants to see. Correct. So back in back in the early 2000s, the city council put together a vision mm -hmm. for, um, you know, the specific plan with, with, with that's within this sure, area, which sure. includes a hospital, includes city hall, includes... Uh, Oak Brook Plaza, which mm -hmm. is to the south of us, and this was the vision that they had. Yep. They had they had on on a long term vision for, for for the site, knowing that you know retail may may end up going south as it has today, mm -hmm. and that how do you revitalize this? And so we've basically taken the rules that were given to us as part of the specific plan and the general plan, sure, sure. and played within those, played within the height limits, mm -hmm. played within the densities. You know, we've we've worked within the traffic. That's that's there. The traffic actually decreases with mm -hmm. with this new plan versus the plan awesome. that was approved in 2016. But yes, it is it is within what our rights are for the site, and so we're just wanting to move that forward and Correct. and and get rid of you know what's there today and yep. actually start moving things forward and and revitalize this as it is a key component to, to Laguna Hills and South Orange County. Well, I can't agree with you enough. And then kind of back to my next question, which is gonna be, I guess, what are the next steps specifically? Go maybe a little bit into what is gonna happen. I think it's gonna be in June, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at the public hearing. And then what, what happens after that? So you know, we've been out in the community, still talking to community members, getting mm -hmm. some community support. We're gonna go back to city council on a special hearing on June 24th at 5 p.m. Okay. And that's basically going to reopen the hearing. They've just continued the hearing mm -hmm. from our April 27th. And what they're going to do with that is they're going to open up to public, more public comments. Wow. And then they're going to ask us questions and staff questions about the project. And from there, our goal is to get a vote from city council to approve the project so that we can move forward and, and get this thing started. Because once, once they approve it, there's some other steps that need to go on. But once it's fully approved and gets through through that 90 days later the city will get a check for three and a half million bucks Stephen, thank you so much that was great information uh, we look forward to the hearing uh, in june uh, we definitely want to see a proactive uh, city council on this project and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, june so thank you so much for joining us today well thank you for having me it was been a pleasure perfect all right well if nothing else we've learned it takes a village to make a village happen the village at laguna hills at least and the Dana Point Harbor as well. Great things can happen when we all pull on the same end of the rope. These two projects will create thousands of jobs, millions in tax revenue, and will serve as two of the crown jewels that will keep South Orange County's economy strong. I wanna thank Supervisor Lisa Bartlett and Brian Ward for discussing the progress, planning, and construction of the Dana Point Harbor revitalization project. And I want to thank former mayor of Laguna Hills, Joel Lottenschlager, and Stephen Logan from the village at Laguna Hills. That project will be going before the city council uh, for consideration on June 24th, as we mentioned. And if you'd like to speak in support of the project, just go to their website, villageatlagunahills.com, or visit them on any of their social media channels to sign up. I want to thank you, our viewers, for joining us today. If you're interested in becoming a member of SOSEC, we have many sponsorship levels available on our website, and that is economiccoalition.com. If you missed any portion of today's program, please either visit our website or go to our social media pages on Facebook or YouTube. I'm Steve Lamott. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time.